All right, y'all, today on the Meet the Masculine series, I have the incredible, amazing, and just ultra genuine Lucas Mack here with me. And I am so grateful, Lucas, that you are here. Thank you for being present for this and saying yes. Can you tell us a little bit about you? And, and even before going into a little bit about you, can you tell people where they can find you? Yes, thank you. And I am, I am honored to be on and thank you. Um, so my name's Lucas Mack and you, people can find me on Instagram at Lucas James Mack or lucasmack.com. And um, I am an entrepreneur, um, uh, author, writer, um, speaker, and someone that is trying to um, see hurt people get healed and healed people go out and heal others. And, um, and I'm on a mission and, and um, it's just an honor to be on here today with you. Yeah, powerful mission. My goodness. Uh, I, I mean, I know we, we're here to talk about, you know, conscious masculine. And, and when, you, when I heard you share your mission, I'm like, gosh, we could talk about that for mm. hours too. I mean, that's such a, a powerful perspective. Um, in that, what is your definition of a conscious man? That is a good question. It's, it's growing, I, I, but really at the root of what it means to be a conscious man is someone that feels deeply internally and not just in the state of external observation. I think most men are hyper aware because we're protectors or we have the ability to be protectors that we're looking out. Um, but the conscious man is someone that with the same vigilance of looking out is also looking in and aware of, of as much as they can comprehend what is happening internally. So that it's, it's an inward reflection as much as it is an outward correction. Good. We could end the interview here. Like that was, that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Whoa. I mean, when you said that, mm. everything in me became so, I could feel a pin drop inside of mm. me. Like I could hear, like the way that that shifted me internally, mm. this is going to sound insane, but I could hear like the feeling of the pin dropping, which doesn't make any sense, but it was, mm. I just got the chills. looks externally just as much as he looks internally. Yes. Yes. Wow. How in the world did you get there? Hmm. Well, I grew up, um, I've always been emotionally intelligent in the sense that um, I was hyper aware of people's feelings. I grew up in an abusive home um, and really, retreated within most of the time. So I was, I knew what I felt and I also observed what was happening and had many out of body experiences during the trauma that was taking place with me. So when I was 20, I attempted suicide and it was after that attempt um, that I took a year of, I stopped partying, I stopped hanging out with people. I stopped doing anything that I had done prior to that moment. And I started reading and studying and reflecting and meditating and praying and going down every religion in the world and understanding why. And, and it really came down to me understanding that our outward expression is a result of our inward reflection. Mm -hmm. And most of us, I included in this, didn't understand why I was doing what I was doing. And even when I knew it was wrong, but I felt compelled to do it, couldn't figure out where did that come from until after I was 20 and I attempted that, spent so much time going back and uncovering why, is, why am I doing this and going internally. And so I think, um, I'm gonna give you a long answer, but I think we are conditioned as humans, especially in Western culture, to 
only talk about what. So the second question after uh, we exchange names when we first meet is what do you do? And mm -hmm. we don't really care what people do. We want to know, do we know, like, and trust this person? Can we build a relationship with this person? Mm -hmm. But the only way we could ever get to that is asking the question, why? Why do you believe what you believe? But we in our society are stripping away the why until a Simon Sinek comes out and says, hey, really, why is the only thing that you know, leads to success? And everyone's like, oh, why? But why is the only emotive and internal question? Hmm. Who, what, when, where are only uh, questions that engage the mind. And so really digging deep into why, why do I act this way? Why is my behavior this way? And going internally, then we can correct the external. So I think that's, yeah, that's how I came, came to that understanding. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Was there ever an intention to become a, what we would call today, conscious man? No, not, in, not intentionally. And here's what I, here's what I believe. I believe everyone has the ability to be at the same conscious level. Mm -hmm. I really do. I believe that when our souls, I don't, I, I am a study with like a rabbi and he says, you know, souls have different positioning before they enter the body, whether that's true or not. We all have this. We, I do know we're all higher. We can all uh, have a higher vibration than we are currently yeah. uh, vibrating at. And so I think that it's not being intentional to be conscious. It's being intentional to be vulnerable, which raises our consciousness and raises our vibration. And the vulnerability will only come when people feel safe. And I think most men, we're, you know, we're talking about like the macho men. Most macho men were physically struck mm -hmm. and told that they were loved. Mm -hmm. And the dichotomy that that creates, the actual chasm that that, that builds inside us. And that's what I mean. Like, well, I, of course I love you, but I hit you. Mm -hmm. um, our actions really are misaligned with our intent. Mm -hmm. So, no, there wasn't a point where I said I want to be conscious. There was always a desire to be free from this internal prison that I felt locked in. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't free until I was in a judgment free place. I didn't find it in church. I didn't find it in my peers. I didn't find it in my home. I didn't find it in my, my parents. I didn't find it anywhere until I went to a training for the very first time. And there was no judgment. And when there was no judgment and I was, you know, is there judgment or, you know, what's really going on? And I felt free and I, I shared and truly experienced healing healing at a level that I didn't even know was possible and my life changed. And I do believe that everyone can go through that same process. Every man, there's a lot of tough guys. I was raised by a tough guy, you know, mm -hmm. tough it out. Don't cry. Um, you know, I'd be bleeding in my dad, you know, just tough it out. And like, what do you do with that? I'm bleeding. And I think a lot of people are bleeding emotionally as well as physically. Yeah. And the world says, I don't want to hear it. Mm. Tough it out this is the workplace or this is we're out to have fun right now or, you know, whatever. I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. so what do we do with this? We just stuff it down deeper and deeper and deeper till we get to this place where the suicide rates higher than it's ever been. Opioid epidemic is, is through the roof. I mean, we're struggling right now and people like you, Katie, who are just so beautiful and so precious and mm -hmm. allow you are the permission for, souls not just a gender but a soul to be free mm. uh, and so answering very long uh in the long way but no i never was intentional on being conscious i was intentional on being free mm. mm -hmm. that was an, an amazing answer and thank you for sharing pieces of your story so vulnerably with with me and with the people who are going to watch this yeah. my pleasure that question in all transparency was a bit of a setup. Um, <laughs> and, and, well played. And, and here's why. Um, I hear women, and, and I've heard a few men, you know, being in this personal development world and, and working with, with people who are on the path and, and forward facing, let's say, and, and creating their futures. 
I've heard this dialogue around, he's not going to grow with me, right? And he's not on the path and he's not reading the books. And he's not going to workshops and he's not doing this. And, and the reason I asked about, did you ever intentionally decide to become a conscious man is because really the intention wasn't about becoming a conscious man. The intention was about turning yourself from swimming in what happened to facing the possibility of what can I use in me to create something different. Yes. Yes. And that, because you spoke to your past and, and when I stop and, and I've had moments in my past where I stop and I'm like, damn, mm. somebody looked at my rap sheet. Mm. Be like, what? You know, I, I mean like all of the things that I went and experienced in a short period of time in a short span of life also if somebody just took that and, and, and judged me or evaluated me just based on that, it would be difficult and highly limiting for us to create a relationship of unconditional love moving forward, possibly. Right. And I think that this happens so much when, when we um, step into relationship and even when we're considering partnership with somebody is, is we have this tendency to look at, well, what's your past like? Where did you go to school? What kind of family did you grow up in? What kind of dynamics did you have? You know, what kind of habits do you have? Right. And we, we can take that and make a story, make meaning out of what kind of person you would be because of that. Right. Or we could present with unconditional love right. and a space of openness and curiosity yes. and learn that yes we may have been through all of these things that seem very dark and and have these social judgments attached to them and we've mm -hmm. taken it and we've made something magnificent of it yes yes and that is alchemy that's so powerful it's beautiful it is beauty it is it is um it's interesting. All those questions, I, I really believe what's are contentious. That when we mm -hmm. ask questions of what, mm -hmm. there will, we, first of all, we're reducing someone to a particular. Mm -hmm. uh, my, um, we have a really close family friend who's a Holocaust survivor, and he showed me um, years ago the tattooed numbers on his wrist. And he said, uh, Lucas, when you reduce someone to mere numbers, you've erased their humanity. Mm -hmm. He said, never forget that. When you reduce someone to mere numbers, you've erased their humanity. And I think it's the same when we're asking the questions of what. What, 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 what. It's just binary bits of data and we're deconstructing the human being. And we're really missing the opportunity to connect and think every question that you would, you, us, we, everyone, mm -hmm. that we ask with what, if we changed it to why, why, um, I forget the list of questions you just said, but I was like, oh, what a beautiful question of like, well, why do you believe that? Why have you done this? Where, you know, why? And then that allows just the unpacking. And it's not a place of judgment, but it's truly a place of, I want to be in that with you. I want to be in that trench with you. And I want to walk through the trench with you. And when we get to that place, mm -hmm. that is, I don't care the toughest man in the world, the, the grittiest, you know, when you come at that place with a guy like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone, guy, male, mm -hmm. female. Mm -hmm. And, um, and think, I mean, we have three kids um, and, I, right before I came to get online, um, my, my son said, can I have some chips? And I said, no. And he said, why? Why? <laughs> why? 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 I hear why all the time. I hear why all the time. And we are conditioned to ask why, and then parents strip it away. Mm. We strip away the why, and we just tell them what, and this is what I want you to do, because I said so. So I'm hyper and that's how it was for me growing up. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I see it now where I get to, <laughs> here's why. And take a few more seconds. <laughs> the chip bag is empty, you know, like, oh. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I love that. Um, so it's, uh, it's really beautiful to see at the young age 
the kids ask why and may we all and my encouragement to parents is may we always ask why may they always ask why may would that never get stripped because it's a process to get back to that place of why because it's it's heart it's led by the heart it's where the soul expression is for sure mm. and it's so humbling because when my son starts asking why, I'm like, damn, I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I, say nothing. I don't know. I know absolutely <laughs> nothing. Like, <laughs> it's so good. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. actually, I just don't know. Actually, I, 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 and there's been moments, right? Where I'm like, can I get back to you? Yeah. Like, I, re I literally, I have no idea. I need to sit with this because I'm not even sure why I feel this way. And what you a beautiful, know? what a beautiful answer though, to give, give your child because what you're telling them is I'm not perfect. I'm not God. I'm not all knowing. I'm not omnipresent. I'm not omniscient, omniscient, uh, whatever. I'm not, I'm not the all seeing yeah. being that you, I am a human. I am a journey traveler with you. Mm -hmm. I am the steward you, but I don't know either. And my parents did specifically my, my, um, father did that opposite that he was all knowing he mm. and i had the, i constructed this view that he is a godlike figure and it's it's dangerous and so what a beautiful thing that you can say can i get back to you because your child's like you're more relatable first of all they're gonna it's just beautiful when we stay humble they're there i uh, on my facebook page i say on the head uh, image there is no unity without humility mm -hmm. And I, we want unity so badly and the only means by which we'll experience unity in the home with, with each other and relationships and between countries, whatever in the world is where there's humility. So yeah. I just want to tell you beautiful job to say Thank that. It's you. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I love that you bring up humility because as I reflect on my journey having been that woman who was hard, I mean, I was there to like beat the man, mm. you know, like if he showed up in my space, like we were competing, <laughs> even if we didn't agree to it. <laughs> you know? And, and really that came from, that came from a mom who was super powerful, is super powerful as a being. And she entered the workforce and needed to compete for her position. Like mm. she needed to be able to do the man's job just as good, if not better than, as than the man, you know, and that was, the social culture then, that was the climate. Yeah. And so she taught me what she knew. And with the sincerest intention to empower me to be able to create something really awesome with it. And I found myself in this place where I knew it wasn't working anymore. Like I knew I was lonely as hell. Yeah. I, you know, like could only attract these men who, because I was so, forward and aggressive and and hard mm -hmm. they reflected that to me yeah yeah and so they didn't know how to be soft they didn't know how to hold their vulnerability because i didn't know how to hold mine mm. and so that's powerful it was, yeah it was this really humiliating mm. space to be in not humiliating but but humbling let's say yes. space yes. to be in because in that bridge, in that bridge from moving from where I was to, to where I play now, there was this opportunity to be super vulnerable and to, to be in that space, like when the kid asks you why and you don't know, to be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Right. I am so fresh to this. Yes. Like, yes. like 27 yes. years old, learning how to walk all over again. Yeah. You know, in the world and just bumping up against my stuff and other people's stuff and really dancing with it. And right. so I love that you, you bring in that humbleness, that, that humility, because that's such an integral part of, of the healing process. Yeah. It, it um, and humility is not weakness. That's one mm -hmm. thing that everyone needs to know. It's not weakness. It is the purest form of strength is humility mm -hmm. because you intentionally make you, we all have the ability to, to strike. We all, every, everyone has the ability to, to go hard. Mm -hmm. It's the Pete. So we all have that ability. So there's no strength in going hard. Mm -hmm. The strength is in with the ability to go hard, 
to go soft, mm -hmm. to go low, to drop down and to listen. And that is power. And, and truly, this is what our world needs. And what I love what you said, it's not gender. It's not because you went hard, you reflected hard, they went hard. It's mm -hmm. human beings that we all get to, I believe, we all get to be the permission for everyone's freedom. And in that, it's when we stand in the power of our vulnerability, it gives every person the, the permission to stand in the power of theirs, whether it's a child or whether it's a peer or whether it's an elder. Um, and this is what our world needs more. This is why being on here with you is such an honor because I, I watch you, you are that, you are the permission. Mm -hmm. um, and for men, specifically i believe it's growing right now that there are strong men that are choosing humility and choosing the the vulnerability and actually sharing from a powerful stance the, their journey and um it's happening more and more and i really believe there's an awakening taking place right now everywhere and it's not external it can start with us it starts with you and i it starts with me sharing with you you sharing with me mm -hmm. whoever watches this you sharing with someone else and the ripple effect always begins in it never begins out mm -hmm. and um and i think human nature by default we want it to start out and come to us but just like i say it being outwardly observant we have to be as vigilant internally to be observant to make the change so that outward change happens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that's really you speak to the cultivation of internal safety and internal peace mm. and and we spoke i think briefly about safety before we hopped on here yes. uh and how it's it's so important to to the, the development of intimacy, not just with ourselves, but with other people to have that feeling of, of safety, which in my opinion is that, that unconditional love. Yes. That I'm, I'm not going to share this and then be rejected from the tribe or abandoned or, or murdered or whatever the, the biological wiring is. Right. It's so much about can we trust in our inner strengths, even if we can't see them externally yet, and take a step forward and and really you spoke to doing a workshop um, and having this transformation and really being in the space and in the presence of people who are saying in in their authentic truth I'm standing with you in this yes and enrolling people alongside you in that that's right well I, I tell people we, we don't we don't perform surgery on ourselves. that would be that would be sadistic we don't um, you know we don't butcher our own meat or if you don't eat meat you don't really go out and harvest and that we, you know we're not mm -hmm. predominantly farmers anymore we don't everyone has a beautiful role in society and right now there is this beautiful opportunity to go experience the role of personal transformation and so we go to these places where we can experience it just like we go to the doctor just like we go mm -hmm. anywhere uh, to the grocery store to get our groceries now we have the opportunity and I think more and more people are waking up to these personal transformation um, centers or workshops or um, whatever names they're given. And yeah, I really believe as much as I believe every person should be in therapy um, because I think that the stigma is absolutely ridiculous mm -hmm. that everyone mm -hmm. should have a safe place just to even calibrate what's healthy and what's not healthy like mm -hmm. i'm being this is the, for me when i first started going um a little over two years ago i mean I, I was having flashbacks of the abuse that i went through i had never had a first person memory prior to 20 years old until a little over two years ago and i started having these first person memories and i, I mean i remembered but they were third person prior is um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rough and so I started going to therapy and like what is happening with me and the most beautiful thing was for therapy was for my therapist have to, happens to be male mm -hmm. but female and male for them to say okay this is what you're experiencing or this is what you grew up in here's what's healthy <laughs> mm -hmm. a healthy person would do this and just hearing that was like wow uh-huh 
sometimes I felt like he was inserting like a rod in my brain, just like opening up to, wow, okay, that's health. Yes, that is health. I know that's health, but I never would have been able to construct that myself. And so therapy is important also. Um, and there's a big stigma around. So I don't know if people, especially males are as apt to go to therapy, but definitely I think the stigma there's, not yet that stigma, and nor I believe there will be to the mm-hmm. transformation. And to invite people to go to these these places, it's it's beautiful. It really yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I actually uh, I'm a psychotherapist. Oh, awesome! Coach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and <laughs> and so yeah. I I love the therapy, and then you know, in in that process, kind of realized. There's, there's some other things that I get to bring to the table. And, mm. um, and I did that shift mm. and it's so amazing. And it's so, so amazing. And I, I actually worked in the prison environment for a few years. And it's interesting because I worked in the women's prison. And so the women are, are so ready to like, yeah, let's do it. Sign me up. I want to talk. I want to, you know, I would see wow. my, my patients there in that setting a few times a week, you know. Mm. However, in the male prisons, um, within the certain groups, if you are caught being in the presence of the therapist, or if you are, if you're going to therapy, you yeah. will be, yeah. you yeah. will be punished or put to death. And we get to, we get to really be a space to, to welcome people mm. on their journeys of inner exploration. And, and, and really from, from the masculine perspective, sometimes I wonder, does that, do you feel that in the collective with regard to the masculine of, of that, that the shame or the, the secrecy kind of <clears throat> associated with going to see a mental health professional? Yes. I, I still, even with my, my friends who I'm very close with and um, my, my small group of, of friends, um, you know, they'll say, well, I've gone to couples counseling and they consider that therapy, um, which for that context it is, but it's certainly not getting down into the depth and, and why they want to get, go vulnerable is because their spouse or mm-hmm. significant other, or who, you know, their partner is going to judge, judge that. Um, so there still is, and really it all comes down to, and it's one word, it's fear. People are afraid because of whatever experience or whatever, and, and that's why I think it takes, the strength is standing up and being the permission. And so if it is to be, it is up to me, and it is up to each one of us to, regardless of the stigma, I'm gonna stand for you. Mm-hmm. And in that stand, allow you to stand for another. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think, Men, I don't want to generalize, but mm-hmm. it is more predominant. I mean, most, a lot of men got hit by, with belts mm-hmm. by a parent. Mm-hmm. And then what do you do with that? I mean, yeah. where do you go with that? I was like, wow, you know, we, you can use it as a badge of honor. Like, yeah, my old man hit me with the belt and like, I'm tough mm-hmm. today and I'm going to pass it on to my kids. So the, who I'm supposed to love unconditionally, I'm going to strike them and tell them and they don't want to mean it just goes on and it's, yeah. it's, it's asinine. Mm-hmm. And so we have to stop the cycle of abuse because the abuser in the home eventually becomes the abuser at any level of society and left unchecked. Yeah. Bad things continue to happen. Mm-hmm. And so for males specifically, yeah, we, I am on, an, I am on, an, I mean, I have been so vulnerable with my story and I will continue to be that because I'm not, they're not alone. And when we feel isolated and that's what I think abusers want us to feel isolated mm-hmm. and not that everyone's an abuser that's not open, but yeah. at some point there was abuse and then they make mm-hmm. you feel like you're, you're the only one or you're crazy or mm-hmm. so. Yeah men can and will, and I know, um, are starting to drop into their heart, starting to drop into that space because, you know, hopefully I know, um, there are some really tough 
who I look at as like tough dudes, grizzled, but are following me. And mm-hmm. someone reshared Rising Bahala is the name of one account. They shared a, a post today. And he's like a yes. really tough dude. And, and yeah. my post was that he shared was just because you stand alone doesn't mean you're wrong. It could mm-hmm. mean you're first. Mm-hmm. And men need to know that. Just because you stand alone doesn't mean you're wrong. It could mean you're first. Mm-hmm. And what a beautiful thought to be the first, the first domino to fall that all the dominoes fall. Yeah. Yeah. So true. So true. And, and what a, what a level of courage, right? Whether intentionally, consciously, but that takes a level of courage to, to decide to stand up and say, okay, I know mom and dad did this. I know Ann and uncle do this. I know grandma and grandpa do this. Goes way back, back, back. Yeah. I'm willing to be the first to say, I'm not going to stand for it anymore. Yeah. And that, that to me is where I experience so much compassion for the men and the women right now. Because there is this rumbling in the collective yes. where we are waking up at rapid rates and saying, what? Yeah. Wait, no, not anymore. And, and I have experienced so many women, and I, I'm sure you can speak to this for the men, but they're coming to me. And under any other circumstance, somebody would have said, it's totally okay if you quit right now. Mm. It's totally cool if you just give up, if you just settle, like you've been through so much. And what's happening instead is they're saying, no, because I've been through this, I need to stand up. I need to say no more and do something different. And I'm here to do it with you. And, oh, I just get chills when I think about that because yes, there's been, there's been the, the assaults, you know, between, between men and women, there's been this, this kind of patriarchy and there's been the oppression and the suppression and all of those things. And there's an immense amount of pressure that we put on the men to, to resolve it or to fix it. And, and it's not going to happen if we as women are standing here going, fix it. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen from my perspective is we say, how do we do this yes. together? Yes. Yes. I think that is so beautiful. You know, and, and how can I, how can I add value to this? Yes. I've been hurt. Yes. I, you've been hurt. Let's figure out how to create something different together. Yes. Yeah. I think the specifically like you and I, the people that have gone through the worst of the worst are fueled. If they, if they switch, if they, if the hurt become healed, then I believe those that have gone through the worst of the worst are fueled to uncover the best of the best in humanity. Like we, Mm. it is our almost birthright. It's, it's this crown that we've been given is Mm. like a queen king now go forth and uncover the best of the best in humanity, show them what they can be, show them mm. how they can live, like paint the picture, give them the vision. You know, the old prophet said where there's a lack of vision, the people perish, like people are dying because they don't have a vision out, a way out. How do I get out? And so if I don't have a way out, hope, hope, without hope, our hearts become sick and we have despair and hope and disease and all these things. And so being the permission and then showing like it doesn't have, first of all, nothing that is has to be Mm -hmm. nothing that is has to be. Everything can be different. Everything can change when we choose a different route. When you say how, yeah, how can we do this together or inviting the, the permission, the space to, because there's, there's a difference between the narcissistic personality disorder, which will, they're going to cause chaos and have mm-hmm. a control and, and it doesn't matter if you create a space or not. It's all sorts of, and I do this because this is <laughs> that's what it feels like. Yeah, it's what it feels like. <laughs> You're in the present. <laughs> You're in the here. I tell people the two words that 
I describe my childhood are confusion and fear. Mm. And so there's that space. But then the other space of the man who feels emasculated and is trying to just calibrate his own worth and might, you know, erupt. That person, I believe, if just given the space and and if they feel unconditional love, they're, they've never experienced unconditional love. I believe you set yourself apart in this world if you show people unconditional love, which I don't even like the qualification of unconditional love because love is just unconditional. However, we've qualified, well, I love you to this point, but the minute you act out of this point, yeah. I don't love you. And then we feel that. And then it's like, well, constantly we're performing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, if we create that place of love for, for each other, male and female, the growth, the beauty, the discovery, the wonder, the partnership, the trust that is created will never be forgotten, cannot be erased, and only strengthens the foundation deeper that we can stand um, on when we we build these relationships. I, I talk about, you know, mankind, we qualify cities like the power of a city mm-hmm. by the level of skyscrapers. Like, this city has this many skyscrapers with these amount of, you know, it's a hundred floors or whatever it is. What about the foundation to hold that? Mm-hmm. Ooh. What happens when all of a sudden yeah, all yeah. These, these machines disappear and you're like, where did yeah. they go? And they're, they're so deep into the ground. That is what we need to esteem far greater Mm-hmm. then what is seen is what is not seen. And that's what I'm talking about, that inward reflection. Like if we honored the foundations mm-hmm. more than we honored the structure, mm-hmm. everything would be different in our relationship. Yeah. Everything. Yes. You know, I'm ready to order me a Lucas Mack shirt. <laughs> and I'm, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready oh, to so see Lucas Mack all the way. Like... <laughs> Really though, I, I if, if, if you're watching this, watch it again, because you have shared so much wisdom and, and just deep, deep concepts that, and you present them so beautifully. You present them in such a way that they land. And, and my, my ego is willing to receive them because they're in this length. They're like boxed in this beautiful package. So my ego's like, yay. And then it takes them and it's like, fuck. You know? <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> I, I don't mean to cuss, but like, that's what it's like. It's just like, it's, my, it's not my ego. And then like, it just drops in and I'm like, whoa. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Truly. This is, this is awesome. We could go for hours. I have no doubt. Um, is there anything final that you would like to leave people with? Mm. It's this formula. It's the same. I believe love gives truth permission to come forth, mm-hmm. resulting in personal freedom. Mm-hmm. Love is is the most love is power without love there is no power Mm -hmm. darkness is not more powerful than light darkness exists in the absence of light light and love when when love enters it is game over Mm -hmm. you can walk to anyone anywhere in any situation and when you love them there is no power greater than that Mm -hmm. truth though and we talked about this before the recording truth is like a groundhog and it sits in our hearts, burrowed deep in our heart, and it wants to come out. But the minute it sniffs any, the scent of judgment, the sniffing of a lack of love, it will burrow deep and deep and deep. So then people are wondering, why isn't this person, why isn't this man experiencing consciousness? Why isn't this one, why are, what, what's going on? It's just going deeper and deeper and deeper. And every day that that truth experiences that judgment, it's going deeper and deeper. So right now, that's why I talk about the foundations. The truth is so deep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we need to love. And when truth does come forth, healing, mm-hmm. freedom, beauty, life. So love allows truth to come forth, resulting in personal freedom. And that's what I would love everyone to remember, take away, 
meditate on, dwell on, and apply. I think the world will be a different place when we do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes to that. Beautiful. Thank you. And where can they find you? Um, so uh, Facebook at uh, Lucas Mac, Instagram, Lucas James Mac, or LucasMac.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lucas. And, oh, I forgot. Sorry. Yeah. One thing. Yes. Uh, I have a podcast. Um, it's called The Golden Rule Revolution. And um, I think, I don't know, I forgot that. I, I um, would love to invite people to join this conversation, to become a, a golden rule revolutionary, to stand for love for people mm -hmm. and, um, and be the change that we want to see. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. My pleasure.